Hey everybody, welcome to Asymptotes of Rational Functions. So I'm just going to do a couple of examples here of how to find uh, vertical and horizontal asymptotes. This is Nicholas JMV. So let's get started with an example here. So use a method of your choice to find the horizontal and vertical asymptotes. Now you can do graphing, you can use uh, a graphical method, uh, or you can go by hand. I prefer, in this case, I'm going to show you by hand how to do this. Now. Number one, I've got a fraction here. So I'm actually going to start with the vertical asymptote. Let me grab my pen here. So I'm going to start with my vertical asymptote. And you don't have to, OK? So I'm going to go ahead. And the two things that you have to worry about with vertical asymptotes are radicals. And I'm going to say they need to be even, OK? And then you have to look out for the denominator. Those are the two things that you have to look for. Now, when you're dealing with a vertical asymptote and a fraction, the first thing you might want to think about looking at is can you factor? Okay, and I can't factor this. X squared plus 1 does not factor. Okay, X minus 3 is, uh, is prime. It's in the simplest form. Okay, so in, in this case, I can't factor. So when I look at the vertical asymptote here, I have to look at radicals and denominator. There's no radical. I can't factor. So I'm, now I'm looking at this denominator. Well, the denominator is X minus 3. And with fractions, you don't want the denominator to ever equal 0. So we're going to set the denominator equal to 0 and solve for x. So I just go ahead and add 3 to both sides. So x equals 3 is going to be my vertical asymptote. Okay, It's not removal or anything like that. There's no factoring. If you could factor and cancel things out, then we'd have something that's removable. So I've done my vertical asymptote for this example. Now let's go ahead and look at the horizontal asymptote. Now, there's some specific rules here. So for the horizontal asymptote, remember there's three. In this case, the power on the numerator, so if I go ahead and I guess if I rewrite this, x squared plus 1 over x minus 3, the numerator has a larger power than the denominator. So the numerator is greater than the denominator by power. Okay, that means by our rules, okay, there is no horizontal asymptote. Okay, that's one of the rules. One of the three, the big three, okay? Now, it just so happens that because the numerator is greater in power by one, there actually would be a slant asymptote, okay? But we're not going to find that. They're not asking us to find that in this video. We just want vertical and horizontal asymptotes. Okay, so the vertical asymptote is x equals 3. There is no horizontal asymptote because the numerator has a greater power. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at our last example. Okay, so again, let's use any method to your choice to find the horizontal and vertical asymptotes. Now, again, I like to start with the vertical asymptote. So I can't factor the numerator nicely, and if, even if I could, if I wanted to have r radicals in the factors, they're, they're not going to be the same. So if I write g of x again, the numerator stays the same. There's no radical, so that's good for me. Okay, But the denominator is x squared minus 1. Well, that can simplify into whoops, x squared plus 2 all over. We can change that out into being x plus 1. It's a difference of two squares, x plus 1, x minus 1. Now, you have to think now, just like we did before, you can't factor. Okay, There's no radical, so we look to the denominator, and we set the denominator equal to 0. Now, what value would make this factor 0? It would be negative 1. What makes this 0 would be 1. In this case, we have two vertical asymptotes. They're x equals 1 and negative 1. So there are my vertical asymptotes. Horizontal asymptote. This one's a little different. If we look, same power here and here. The numerator equals denominator in, the, in power. So by definition, we divide the leading coefficients. The leading coefficients are 1 and 1. So the horizontal asymptote is equal to 1. 1 divided by 1 here. Okay, so that's just a, two quick examples of rational functions of how to find the horizontal and vertical asymptote using rational functions. If you guys have any questions or comments, let me know, and we'll see you next time.